Now, I understand you did 13 years in prison. Yeah, yeah. Now, what landed you into prison exactly? Yeah, when I was 15, I caught a body. Basically, you know, being from where I'm from is about neighborhoods, you know, going to the go-go. And as, as, as the lines get real twisted and blurred during them times. Now, doing 13 years, uh, was that part of a plea deal? No, nah, no, nah, I went to trial. I was, uh, I was charged with first degree felony murder. and went to trial. I had a mistrial. Then basically they added on more charges, second degree felony, second degree, the brave heart mass slaughter. They just tried to hit me with whatever. I went to trial, got found guilty for second degree murder, sentenced to 30 years, and I also was sentenced to 10 years for a ride, so it left me with 40 years. And I was sentenced as an adult, trialed as an adult, so I went to the adult system. Even though this happened at 15 years yeah. old. Is that allowed? In certain cases it is. That's why they uh, use the first degree felony. If it was second degree murder from the get go, they would have had to charge me as a juvenile. So they use robbery to uphold the felony on a murder, make it first degree felony, and no matter your age, they can hit you as an adult. Now, for the people that are watching this, explain how you get 30 to 40 years, but you get out in 13. Basically, you always have to study your case because the court system make a mistake and damn near 80 to 90 percent of the cases basically violate your rights. So you got to uh, you know, you read your case, you got to get your transcripts of your trial, your pre-trial transcripts and make sure they follow the law by, by sentence you. Make sure they follow the law at your trial, make sure pre-trial investigations, everything was done correctly because any slip up, they could overturn your case, vacate your sentence, or modification. You know, if you, uh, if the courts feel like you're doing what you're supposed to do while you was locked up, they can modify your sentence. Mm. So was this you studying your own case and figuring this out? Did you have the help of an attorney to get this reduced? How did that work? Basically, I had the help of jailhouse attorneys, basically do guys that have life and all they do is study law. Oh. And their case may not be overturnable, so they sit in there and they fight to get other people out. So they get satisfied on, you know, helping, especially a young dude. I'm coming to jail, 15. They don't want to see me in there. They look at me like they son or they little brother. Mm. So I had the help of jailhouse attorneys, and I had a good attorney in my corner. And he basically sat back till I, you know, put everything together. I was in court for three years fighting. And what actually get, got me out was the modification. I put in for the post, but they was basically like, look, we'll call you back on the modification. Were people surprised to see you get out so early? Oh yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was. I was surprised, like beyond everything. I was surprised because I didn't even know they was gonna come through with the modification. I just was doing what I was doing in jail files. Man, as I came through the ranks in prison, I started dealing with the youth. I started dealing with the young guys that was coming in. So I started three uh, youth programs and I started a music group. And my judge liked it. She loved, she loved the work I was putting in with the young guys, getting on their GEDs and everything. So she called me back to court, ran all my time. It, it, it shocked me among probably, the only person that was probably more shocked than me was my mother. Mm. I see. Now, when you were fighting this um, and going through the mistrial and then another trial, how long did all that take? Uh, and were you bonded out at that time or were you sitting I in county? The whole time. I, I was no bond. My, uh, we was trying to get a bond, but they kept me at no bond status. Even at 15 years old. Yeah, that's the because uh, the you know they uh, the media got involved with it and pumped my case up so much. And it was election time, and they pumped the case up so much to the point it it, it, it grew a face of its own. It was mm. it wasn't even about me no more. And, uh, it took, uh, the fighting, it took like two years. It took about two years. I was sitting, waiting to find out if I was going to go home or go to prison. Now, was this your first uh, offense or your first run-in with the law? Or did you have a second? Yeah, I had, okay. uh, my first charge was an armed robbery. I was like 11 or 12. Went to juvenile, stayed there for a day. They let me out. Went to court, got six months house arrest. Did that... Uh, do you think did that weigh in on any of this stuff, you having a prior charge and stuff like that? Like, if you had a clean slate, do you think the things that took place to get you in prison uh, would have taken place, or would they have been more lenient? 
the only thing that would have changed was it probably would have helped me get a bond if I didn't have a prior charge. But when you're a juvenile and you make a transition to adult court, that's supposed to be white clean. Mm. So I don't even know how they still be using it against you, using it against us. But uh, it's supposed to be white clean, but they still throw it in there. And while I was in trial, actually, the prosecutor was trying to bring up my juvenile record. The judge said, as long as I never open up the door, meaning if the prosecutor asked me something like, uh, would you ever rob somebody? And I say, no. He could bring it up like, well, you was locked up for robbery when you mm. were such and such. So as long as I, you know, made my way around whatever was being asked to me or my attorney, as long as we made our way around and never opened up the door, they couldn't bring it up in court. I see. Now, um, you had an attorney yeah, throughout this whole time? Attorney, yeah, yeah. And what did he think the chances of you getting off were? He, actually, he was trying to get me manslaughter because I turned myself in. And, uh, no, I was on camera. It was it was, it was a, a long drawn out situation. So he basically was looking like we might could get you manslaughter. And manslaughter ten years, and you might do five or six on. Mm. And, uh, but he was before the manslaughter. He was fighting to get me back down to juvenile, but they wasn't going for it because they basically said I was a menace to society because of who they went to talk to. You know, they go talk to a bunch of unnecessary people out there, and they tell them a bunch of wild stories. Now. When they added that riot charge, was that something you had done while you were locked up, a riot? No, and it actually was a part of my charge. They said the way and the manner it happened, they charged me with public riot, and I was like, for real? Yeah, I, go. I ain't even wasn't paying attention to that charge. But the crazy thing about that charge, by being a common law charge, the judge can sentence you anywhere from, I believe, zero to 99 years. Wow. Yeah. Now, okay, when you finally hear uh, that you you got a guilty verdict in your trial. What was your initial reaction? What was your family's reaction to it before you entered prison? Well, my initial reaction was, I mean, by me being young and still reckless at heart. Were you I able to like, compute everything? Yeah, or? I was like, fuck it. Like, I didn't even care. I was so ready to just go wherever I needed to go. My family reaction, you know, it was turmoil, it was hurt. It was uh, it was a lot of pain, but they also looked at it like you know somebody lost their life, and there are going to be some consequences behind it. Was there a plea deal offered at all? Nah, uh, we asked for a plea deal. We asked the prosecutor, you know, what's the what's the uh, what would be the plea deal for my client? The prosecutor said, "Tell them plead guilty." <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Now, um, okay, so now it's time to do some time. Uh, you have to head to prison. What what type of prison were you sent to? Was I was it? actually sent to the worst prison in Maryland. It's called uh, MHC, the Maryland House of Corrections, aka the Cut. Like maximum security yeah, maximum level five. Two, yeah. And, uh, when I went in, the COs was even like, "What the hell is that? Why the fuck did they send you here?" Mm. So I'm like, so they was talking about putting me on PC till I was 18, and I was not, I'm not going on no PC, like, I can't do that. Even at 15 years old, you were cool with just being yeah, in general I was, population? I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't going on PC, because, like, in that jail, like, they charge, not the jail, but dudes on the tier that run the tier, if they see that you weak, they're going to charge you for being on the tier. Mm. They're going to tell you, like, basically, you got to pay me to sleep up here, or we're going to do whatever we do to you. Mm. And you know they was you know the day I went in there somebody got uh, killed, Holly Bobo rest in peace. Somebody got killed, and, uh, but I just had my mind made up before I came up the road. I, I locked into myself, looked in the mirror, was like, you're not going for nothing. Like I'm not gonna disgrace my name or my family name. I just I gotta I gotta go. I gotta go. So if anybody stand in my way or act like they gonna, you feel me? I was gonna handle whatever I got handled. What was your first night like? My first night was, Obviously, you said there was a murder there. That yeah, happened. my first night was actually trying to make a knife. Like, my first night was trying to find some steel around my cell that I could break down and turn it into a knife. That was my whole focus my first night. Now, how did you pass the time? Um, you were studying your case, obviously. Yeah, studying. Well, I didn't study my case in the beginning. I was, you know, I was young. When people was, I had so much time that I didn't even care. I felt like, man, what the fuck? So I basically passed my time the same way you do in the streets. You know, you sell drugs and then 
rip and run, get cell phones, talking to everybody, you know, rapping. We did a music room. And, uh, the sports, they got sport leagues in there. Basically just and trying to turn COs, just whatever COs in there, I'm trying to turn them so they can bring me whatever I need. Mm. Is that easy or hard to do, the turning the COs? It used to be easy. Until like, people be telling now, so the COs don't even trust you. Mm. Like, so many guys get caught and they tell on everybody, they tell about the whole operation. So it, it's actually hard now. It's actually, it will, at a point, they would come to you. They see like, oh, he, cause you know when you went there, you got wear state issue clothes. I didn't, I didn't do that. Like I had polo, still had joy. So when they see you like that, they basically like, oh, either somebody sending them money, or he ain't making money. So I'm about to get with him, see if I can make some money. Mm. Now, what about like inmates having sex with female CEOs? Oh yeah, that's. <laughs> Is that easy or hard to do? It's it's hard, but it's easy depending on who you are. Hmm. It's, ain't nobody just going, because like, you could might have some money and go to a CEO like, look, man, I got $200, I'm trying to fuck. And she'd call a code on your ass to get you locked up. But it's just about how you curl yourself. Like The same way they attract to you on the street, they're going to attract to you. And it's just about how you curl yourself. Yeah. Now, during your time, at what point or what age were you when you actually took your case serious and tried to... And was this somebody that came up to you and was like trying to help you get off quicker? Yeah, basically, I, uh, they seen how I was moving. So a few dudes came to me like, look, I see you hustling. I hope you taking that money and trying to get a lawyer. Mm. So I'm like, fuck, I need a lawyer for I'm over. Right. This before I even knew about appeals and reading your cases. This is how I learned about it. So I'm like, fuck, I need a lawyer for Like, I'm over right here. He like, man, you need a lawyer for your appeal, your post-conviction, your modification, your reconsideration, your lead to appeal, your, your uh, federal. So I'm like, oh, I can get back in court? He like, yeah, but you got you know get a lawyer or you study your own case. You got to order your transcripts. Transcripts, two hundred dollars. Or if you go through another channel, they might charge you like seven cents a page. And transcripts might be like two thousand, three thousand pages. Oh yeah. Yeah. So basically, it came from dudes watching me and seeing me make good moves, but I was just going in the wrong direction with the moves I was making. Mm. Now, how good were these guys that were trying to help you, uh, you know, fix your case? Like. What was their ratio? Were they, like, how many people before you were they able to get off to lesser sentences? Oh, some, mm, you got, oh, you got some good dudes, man. You got some, you got some good dudes. Uh, there's a lot of fake ones in there. Cause you, they, some of them offer, ask for money too. Oh, okay. Like $200 is. So they, there's some hustling this. Yeah, some, see, and that's, well. you got, it's just like the streets. Like, wow, that's it's crazy. some finessing. Some dudes might come, you might, the funniest story I got is basically one dude was like, uh, I help you out. They they see you in the law library, and that's how they basically look at their victims. Mm. They see you in the law library studying your cases. It ain't hard to see if somebody look confused. Yeah. So you come over there like, man, what's up, young man? You know, you, you looking at your case? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I'm trying, man. I locked up, so I said, I'm trying to get out. So they talk to you, whatever. So one dude told me like, look, man, I asked your mother to put me on with a lady. You know, I do your whole case for free. Right there, I'm like. Yeah, this is some bullshit. Like, cause if you really about what you do, you gonna have a set fee. You gonna have a standard, cause you yeah. gonna be able to deal on your terms, cause you know how good you are. Then you got guys like Lomax. Lomax, he from Baltimore. Like, he got his cell phone as well, but he was getting dudes home. Mm -hmm. If he didn't get you home, he got you some type of rhythm on your time, cause a lot of dudes don't go right home when they get their time back. Some of them still got two or three years to do, unless you caught an extra charge while you was locked up. So like Lomax still out right now, getting dudes out. Mm. Now, okay, so at, at what point, like how, were you five years in when this opportunity oh, came Oh, this was, uh, yeah, I'd say like five years in. I was about five years in, because seven, eight. Yeah, five years in. I was five years in and I, uh, Cause I almost missed the deadline. Cause you got deadlines to file those. I would call them claims. Like you got a year to file your uh, modification. You got this amount of time to file your post. And if you don't file them, you can't file. Them. Mm. So you'll be stuck in jail with whatever time you got. Oh, I see. I got you. So at around the five year time, you start this. And at at how long did it take before you finally got the break in your case to get a lower sentence? Damn, that shit took forever. I put my first thing in in 
2007. I put my first joint in 2000. It didn't go into 2008, but, and I didn't hear back from the course until probably 2011. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, I ain't hear back from the course till 2011. But I got, I got denied. I got, I actually got denied on my first one. And uh, then I went back, I put something else in. That took like three years. Uh, I went to court 2012 on that one. I ain't really getting no, hear nothing back to like 2014. Mm. And, uh, I was just waiting. Them, them courts, cause you, you also got to think, yeah, it's, it's, it's millions of people that's incarcerated sure. pushing things through the courts. That's why they be trying to ask people not to just file anything, cause they hold up, the, they hold it up. But I can't tell nobody in jail, don't file that. Sure, his freedom, my free, neither one our freedom is more important to each other. Right. So. Now, okay, so you're rapping inside. Um, have you used any lyrics? While you were locked up, since you've you've come home or no? No, nah, I still got them sitting. I got so much. I got them sitting because I want to use them when I'm able to live in a studio. When I'm able to really build with an engineer and build the right beat around the song. Because them songs are timeless. Them songs hold a lot of emotion. Them songs hold a lot of vulnerability. So I don't want to just get them songs out now while I'm still grinding. I want them songs to really be appreciated. Some people I talk to with these type of interviews, uh, they scrap everything they wrote and start from scratch. And some people, like Kevin Gates, he's used some of his yeah. records on his albums. Yeah. Uh, now, did you battle people? Yeah, I used to. Yeah, I used to battle. Being being in there to really get a certain amount of respect. It, it's cool when you kill the ciphers. But when you battle, because you know being in jail, you're around a bunch of men, so it's a lot of competition, a lot of pride, a lot of ego. So it's cool if I kill a cypher, be slick. But when you kill somebody in that battle, you gonna be, your name gonna ring through jails. Mm. Now, um, somebody watching this for the first time about to head into prison themselves, what are some do's and don'ts for somebody <clears throat> first time going in? Any advice? First thing, I, they have to be real with themselves. They have to be real with themselves. If they know they can't handle that pressure, don't act like they can handle the pressure. They got to be, and I'm talking about, they don't even need to talk to nobody. They need to talk about it with themselves. They got to make, because once you, if you know you can't handle it, man, you might want to check in. You might want to go on PC. Mm. You, you might want to go on admin, or you might want to play crazy so you can go to the crazy jet. Because if you can't handle it, they, and you think you can handle it, but you know you can't. You walk in there, try. You might get turned to a punk. You might get turned to a faggy. You might get turned into a smackhead, heron. They, man, they use guys for anything. Cause if if I'm an older guy and I've been in jail for 40 years, and I, all my peoples might be dead on the streets, but I need money to feed this habit. So if I see a young dude coming in and his parents sending him the money. I'm going to get them hooked on this drug so we can get high together. Oh, you feel? I see. So if you're not... Very you, smart. Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, if you're not really about that, you got to be real with yourself. Because some people are like, oh, he a sucker. Oh, he a fucker. He a sucker. He going PC. But that dude want to live. Mm. You feel me? So if you're not about that, you better check in. Now, Ken, any other do's and don'ts? Oh, other than that, man, just be yourself. The main thing is you be yourself. Because man respect man, ultimately. If you be yourself, ain't nobody going, you feel, something still could happen, but if you be yourself, your chances are very high. If you're a basketball player, if you're a funny dude, if you know how to cut hair, like if you be yourself, you, like you, you can get through. Can one survive in prison without joining a gang? Yeah, I did it. It's, yeah, like, you definitely can. And that's about being yourself, because, like, they came at me all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Whatever, whatever, but I didn't have them anxieties. I didn't have them love anxieties or them family anxieties or you know them wanting to be a part of some anxiety. So I was cool. Like, and I had it made in my man. Ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. Ain't nobody sitting on no high chair gonna be like, look, go stab him. Like, nigga, you go stab him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you could do. But like I said, if you not about that, you might need to join the game for the protection. But you gonna be a flunky. Mm. But is it better to be a flunky than to be somebody's, you know? So I don't It's, it's levels. Yeah, it's definitely. Levels. Uh, and it's just, that's why some the person got to be real with themselves because you put yourself in that environment. Whatever you did on the streets, 
Some people be in there actually innocent, but they was living. Some people was innocent, still living that life though. Mm. If, if somebody totally innocent just was framed like on some movie shit, then that's fucked up. Right. But if if you in that type of environment and you get caught up and get sent to prison, man, you you gotta be ready for that work. Did you have to fight in prison? Me personally, I I chose not to fight because knives knives are gonna come out. If I whoop somebody. Him and his mans might try to stab me, this might. So I'm the type of person, I'm going to do the end result in the beginning. So if I get into it with a person, if I'm right there and we got to fight, cool. But if you give me a chance to slide off, if I don't got a knife on me, you give me a chance to slide off and come back with a knife. Mm. Or a nine times time, I'm going to have my knife on me. And if we get into it, I'm going to air you out. So 13 years, you didn't have to fight once? No, I ain't had I, 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 I That say, sounds impossible. Nah, it's not. It's cool. It's laid back. It's laid back. Especially when, when they know you swing that blade, it ain't going to really be no fighting. Whatever situation you get in is about pushing a knife. Now, people that fight, you got a lot of people that do fight in there, but they like, you know, they different caliber people. I'm not going to I'm not gonna fight you. I'm going to stab you. So you even going to know that I'm not playing. I'm trying to take your life or this situation ain't even big enough for us to get into it. So you were maybe trying to defuse a situation before it got to that level? Oh yeah, definitely. If 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 I could, if I if I could like if man if man and man could talk about it and really cuz communication is everything. A lot of situations be over some bullshit or it be mu- miscommunication. So communication is everything. If we could, you know, talk it out or his man come talk to me. And also I'm I'm a popular individual. I always been popular my whole life. So when I came to jail, People already knew who I was, and, I, I see. and mind you, I was on the news, so I wasn't just a person you could run up on or uh, 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 whatever. People got to talk to people to, you know, do they got politics about it. I see. So my situation was a little different than the average person coming in there. But at the same time, even though you are popular and you've been on the news, somebody in there might look at it like, yeah, and that's, that's why a person I, I want to yeah, try, and that's, just to see if he and adds that's up I, to the mm, hype that he is. And that's why I'm gonna push that knife in him, <laughs> just so they can know. Either you gonna fuck with me, we gonna take this to the grave, or you ain't gonna, it, it's not big enough for one of us to lose our life over. So during your 13 years, did you ever have to hit the hole? Did you have to oh, do yeah. any type of discipline like yeah, that? Yeah, for stabbings, yeah. I, I, I stayed in, I, I, went, I got sent to Supermax for two CO stabbings, like, I, I'm gonna keep that blade on. And when I go to the hole, that's what it's about. The first time I ever went to the hole was, I actually got called a DVD player. That's, I didn't know how to hide shit. And then the second time I went to the hole, I got caught with some money. After that, after I learned how to hide shit. And you, I thought you could just have your money. It was the cash in there. I, I didn't know it was illegal. So when they came in my cell, they're like, man, what the fuck? They <laughs> locked me up for it and shit. I was mad at it. And they take your money, you don't get that shit back. Contraband. Yeah. So you didn't get, any in, you didn't get into any fights, but you did stab some people yeah. while you were there. Aren't you worried that more time could be added, or you could catch another charge on top of what you already had going on? So you got, by me being young and looking at 40 years, to me that was life. So it ain't really nothing they could do to scare me. Mm. And a lot of times, well, I got, I got charged with street charges and I beat them. Like when I go to, I come with paid lawyers, I don't go with public offenders. Mm. And uh, a lot of times also, when you got a lot of time, they really not gonna waste no taxpayers' money to take you to trial for if you already gonna be in jail for. Now, if you got a little bit of time, they gonna take your ass to court so they can keep you in jail. But stabbing a CO might be taken differently than stabbing. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, inmate. I got sent. I actually got sent to Supermax. I was in Supermax the whole year. I was fighting that charge the whole year, and my lawyer, you know, we beat that. Crazy. Crazy now, yeah, but two, but two of my friends didn't have the same luck on it. They got double life for added on to their sentence already. It was seven of us on the charge, and two only two of them got found guilty. Did they have attorneys life. and stuff too, or no? No, nah, they had public defenders. You think it would have been a different outcome if yeah, they had an attorney? Yeah, because a lot of stuff the attorneys supposed to did they ain't do. Like one of them had a book with his name on it in my cell, so no, in his cell. So we telling his attorney like. It's impossible for him to be, you know, be out if he got this in his cell at a certain amount of time where I got it. There's only one way he could get it, and yeah. he had to be in his cell. You feel me? So his attorney, they turn his ain't. That shit hurt. It hurt a lot of people, man, because one of the guys was a good guy. 
I didn't go ahead. No, no, no. So, so th th those two guys that you're talking about that yeah, caught yeah. A, 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 that extra charge yeah, of yeah. life, did, were they already in there for life? Yeah, one of them was in there for 80, one of them was in there for 40. No, one of them had 80 and one of them had 50. So now they got double life plus 80 and double life plus 50. So they'll be never, they'll never be able to Yeah, unless to get they home. get a blessing from them courts. Like, you still go fight in court, but it's hard to get back them, sh them street charges. And I always wondered that because sometimes when I do interviews, you know, and a guy's talking about fights they've been in and stuff like that, I always wondered, does that ever enter into the back of somebody's mind to not even engage in the but fight? See, is, you got to think. We, catching another Like, charge. we individuals from the streets. Like, when you're on the streets and do, make do these actions, you know it's charges for them, but you ain't thinking about them at the time. So the same way in jail. Like, you can get charged with anything in jail. If I take your shoes from you, they actually get charged with robbery. You know, and that's the big thing in jail, taking somebody's shoes. And... uh you know, when you in the mode and currently in there, you ain't really thinking about it. Like, it's about, like, I'm not going to let this individual do nothing to me or harm me, and I'm, I'm going to take him out of there if I got to. I see. Now, solitary confinement, um, the hole is what it's usually called or referred to. What was that like for you? Honestly, and I don't want to paint no good picture in prison, but the, it's the, the jails I was in was so corrupt that, like, like, I had cell phones while I was on lockup and shit like that. So, mentally, I didn't get the same anguish as the person that's probably was next door to me. Mm. And, and one thing I could, I know what a person would go through because they would play games with you. They'd cut your water off. They'd mm. stop your mail from coming. And, like, you probably get to talking to yourself and, like, you get real angry and dark. Like, but... The beauty of it is you can really, like, if you if you good with yourself, one thing I did learn from saying some people that went crazy and people that didn't, the people that's going through identity crisis, they can't handle being with themselves for that long. Ah. So people that's good, like, in tune with themselves, you know, they can sit there and meditate, think, plot, strategize, and come off ready to go. <clears throat> how, how long did you have to do probably in the hold out of 13 years? Um, I'd probably say... If you added one, it up. Out of that 13 years, broken all down, I'd probably say, like, probably four years. Not all together, but all separated throughout the... Was whatever it is that got you in there, was it worth it? Or looking back, dealing with the whole that wasn't worth it? Given who I was at that time, yeah. Like now when I look, hindsight is always right. Mm. But being who I was at that time, man, that's how I created it. Like I can't really like, I, I can't really look back at it like, oh, I should have. That's how I created it back then. And everything leading up to who I am now, the man I am now, it created, it was birthed through them seeds. So I don't really cry about it or look at it like, man, it was this and that. I say it was stupid. I say it was stupid because it's nothing worth losing a life over, you know. But at the person who I was then, it's like, man, what can I say? Does time go by slower in solitary, or does it go by the same? Oh, man, that shit go by slower. You got to play with time. You got to, like, stay up all night and sleep during the day, so you got to trick your mind, like, time go by fast. Time go by so slow. Now, being in there for 13 years, um, what is the craziest thing you've seen while you were locked up? Mm. I can't even imagine. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to go off no crazy violence or no crazy... I'm going to go off the things people create in it. I've seen some guys make real-life first wheels and merry-go-rounds out of popsicle sticks. <laughs> like, and I'm talking about, and you could twist it. Oh, wow. And the little horses go up and down, <laughs> and they go around. And I'd be like, y'all are geniuses, man. <laughs> Why are y'all in here? I'm talking about real live, big-ass merry-go-rounds with little people on it, and the little seats be moving when they go. <laughs> like, I'm like, and I seen a dude make a hovercraft, like really with wires and broken CD players, and he made a hovercraft, and the shit float off the air. Yeah. What? Like the police confiscated it from them. They probably gave it to their kids. Like he made a hovercraft. 
And I was like, that's crazy. What the fuck? You know, when I when I see people create like a tattoo gun, yeah, all off of some simple stuff. That's all. You, all prison ink. All your tattoos were in prison. Yeah, I got one tattoo since I've been home, but all the rest of them, everything I got with my arms is all prison. Ink. Now the thing about prison tattoos is I've seen some really bad prison yeah. tattoos. <laughs> And I've seen some really good prison yeah. tattoos that you would have thought they got that mm -hmm. in on the, in the street, not yeah, I, something I'm, locked I'm, up. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. Like I got some. All my I made out. I always say like I made out with my jail tattoos because I be looking at some dude stuff on the street like ah, man, my shit better than yours. Now, couldn't you get in trouble like maybe if they don't catch you getting the tattoo done? Or even if they see a hill and yeah, you that's a ticket. They get. It's called infractions. They give you a rule book, and there's certain things you can't do, and you can't get tattooed. So, like, even if they see a healing, or if they take pictures of you before you go in. Sure. So, if a CEO know you and he look at you like, you ain't had that. Let me come come to the come to the office, and when he bring you to the office, he's gonna look at you, and you get in trouble for that. So all those tattoos you got an infraction for? Oh no, no, damn, we give a fuck about that shit. Like, <laughs> only time they get you is it's same way on the street. Like how police let certain things go, but if they want you, they uh, use anything to get you. True. Yeah. Now, um, I've seen some people uh, tattoo uh, the whites of their eyes as well. Yeah, that shit crazy. Was that being done where you were at as nah, well? Nah, nah, they ain't. We seen, we seen it on like the news and shit. I'm sure people tried it because dudes and they get how up ass everything be trying all kind of shit. I can't, it's crazy. Now, what about rape? Mm -hmm. Do people get raped in prison nowadays See, or is that It's different myth? now, it's, it's the finesse game now. You got, cause you still got them old freaks that was raping people in the 60s and 70s. But you had different organizations that basically, basically was wiped that shit out. So now it's the finesse game. It's the, it's the oh, see somebody that's weak. You talk to them, talk them in the head, get them to move. And oh, I got a game in the cell. Oh, I got all the food. You don't ever got to worry about it. Mm. They get you moved in the cell. They might give you some drink. They, you know they make jailhouse wine. Right. So they burn the alcohol and make real wine. And, uh, basically moonshine. And they might put a muscle relaxer in there. <laughs> and yeah, you curtains. Like, that's why, I, like, one thing that still stands don't take nothing from nobody when they offer you that shit. Don't take it. So people do get raped. Yeah, it's just different. It's a different it's not, way it's of just getting not, raped. It's just not the brutal knock you out, grab you, choke you up. Now you still got two individuals that's notorious in the system that still do that. Like I'm not going to say the whole system, just the systems I went through. Mm. You got two individuals that's still about that, like, choke you out and, and take you. Wow, and they and you can stab them. They like that. They lick it. They like it. Like, oh my gosh! Man, you got you got you got going for the kid. I, I've done I interviews, other prison interviews, and I've heard that you know rape doesn't even. Well, some prisons they've told me that rape doesn't even happen because there's already gay prisoners there. There's uh, already transsexual see, that's what you prisoners. Would think. You would think that. So like, if you want it, you could get but it. But that's the same way on the streets. You got people that give away pussy for free for a cigarette, and they mm. still rape people. But like. The, the homosexual the homosexual actions is not that big that people think. It's not that big. Like it's a small percent of people that indulge in it. It's not like it took me. I haven't. I didn't see it like one of them tranny type. You know, a, fe a female type gay person. I don't know what to call them because I don't want to like you know right. disrespect them. But like, but like a guy trying to play a female. yeah. I never. It, I ain't seen one of them probably till I was on like the eighth year of my bit. Like, till I went into a different area where these different jails was at, and I started seeing them, like, oh, shit, this. Like, that shit fucked my head up. Now, have you ever seen that show on MSNBC called Lock Up? Yeah, I've seen a few episodes of that. Is that an accurate depiction of prison life? <sighs> some, some of them are, but some of them, they be sice. Like, but it, uh, it depends on the episode. You got to go episode by episode. And they show different jails, Yeah, too. that's what I'm saying. See, different jails is different. Like, I can't really speak on what happened in California. Right, like, exactly. I can't really speak on what happened in Tennessee. Right. But I know overall, it's, it ain't easy. That's one thing I can say. So the things they do depict is coming from the truth. They might spin it a little bit because it's TV. Mm. Did people watch that? While they were locked up? Yeah, some people did. Some people didn't like to watch it because they feel like, why well, I'm watching people locked up and I'm yeah. locked up. I just watched it 
to see what other jails' rights were. Because they have violated your rights in prison like this. If you don't know your rights, they will violate them. Some people don't even know they got rights in prison. So I watch them to see the rules and regulations and the rights at other jails to make sure, you know, what, what's going on with me here is, 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 is on point. What kept you motivated while you were inside? My mother. Like, my mother, she, uh, like, I went in there, I got my GED, got college credits. Like, my mother, she kept me motivated because I ain't never, I feel like I was a bad child, you know, and going to, like, I know I heard her. She never, she never would tell me. I know I did, so all the things I know she wanted me to do, I made sure I did it. Even my tattoo, she used to say, you can't get no tattoo till you're 16. Like, I was like, fuck it. But I waited, you know, I waited and got my tattoo. She always wanted me to graduate, so I got my GED. And she just, you know, wanted me to be the best that I could be, no matter my situation. So, you know, I created my label in jail. I started uh, pushing forward on that, and I was able to, you know, do shows. DJ Quicksilver came in there. I did a concert for them. I think he was with 95.5 or something. Yeah, so I was able to do a lot of good things. Have you seen him in free society since? Yeah, yeah I, I seen him. Actually, the first time I seen him was like three weeks ago. And, and that was years ago when I did the show. He still had his long dreads. Did he remember you? Yeah, so he like, I didn't know you was home. I'm like, yeah. I was shocked that he still remember who I was. Yeah. Now. Um, with the GED stuff, the college credits, was that self-motivated? Yeah, it was just motivated because I knew my mother wanted me to get it. Okay. And plus, also this, like the prisons that I was in is real, it's big on conversation because all we got is us, so we talk shit in there. And if you don't know nothing, you're going to look stupid as a motherfucker. Mm. So I wanted to engage in conversation and be able to talk about diverse situations. Now, visitation with your family, what was that like for you? Were you the type of prisoner that wanted a lot of visitation yeah, or? That was me. I, like, I wanted, I, I get upset if somebody, especially if they say they come and they don't come. But I was the type that, because I always wanted to, I never wanted to lose my heart. Because my mother always said, don't let your heart get cold. Don't let your heart get dark in it. So I'm like, if you want that, I need y'all to, you know. I, don't, I ain't accept money from it. I didn't like people sending me money. But visits and letters and pictures, I needed that. So I could always, because they make you feel unhuman in it. So I always wanted to remember who I was as a person. I've never heard somebody say they didn't really want to be sent money. Why? Yeah, because I feel like by me going in so young, I wanted to learn how to be responsible. I wanted to learn how to earn and, you know, take care of myself. So I just always looked at it. And I also, feel like it was like they 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 agreeing that I'm in it. They agreeing with me being in there, so I'm you know, I'm gonna pay you for being in jail. I just didn't. I I, I wasn't really feeling. It. Now, who saw you the most uh, my, with your visitation stuff? My mother and my female friends. They was they years on years on years from the time I went in to the time I got out. Also, my best female friend. She came up there like clockwork. Her and my mother. And whatever female I was dealing with at the time, they was, they held women, <laughs> women, women hold When you go in the visit room, you're going to see women. How far was your family? Uh, they was traveling about two hours. I think it's like two hours or an hour and like 40 minutes. That's not so, bad. Yeah, it ain't that bad. Now, El Chapo escaped prison twice. <laughs> Did you ever have thoughts on breaking it? Hell yeah. Especially with people breaking my, a lot of people escaped out of jail while I was in them. Some dude, one dude, he escaped because every day the truck came, he built something on the truck and got out of there. One dude, they make the CO uniforms in there. One dude oh, got wow. the uniform, jumped the gate, got out of there. One dude manipulated his case with somebody he knew. He ain't get out of there, but he was this close. The only reason he didn't got, get out of there because the right judge ain't signed it. Uh -huh. So when they seen it, a different judge name, they called them. And they got them busted. But dudes, was, I, I had dreams of escaping, but I never really had the balls to try the shit. Mm. Did those people that escaped eventually get captured Hell again? Hell yeah, because they escaped with no plan. Yeah. They, they be like, I just want to escape. And they escape and like, they go right back to the same area or be stuck in the area around the jails and shit. Mm. It's tough. Very tough. But you got to have money and a plan to really make something happen. Which I'm sure El Chapo did. Yeah. <laughs>